students of grade 11. In the next few minutes, you will be introduced to the narrative essay. In addition to introducing you to the different techniques that you can use when attempting to write a narrative essay, I will also give you a heads up on all the different aspects that you must consider when doing up a rough draft. There are different types of essays, but the main types of essays that will come for your exam are descriptive, argumentative, discursive and narrative. In the coming lessons, I will introduce you to all the other essay types. But for today, we will learn how to write a narrative essay. So before we look at how we can write a narrative essay, let's first figure out what a narrative essay is. Have you heard of short stories? Well, narrative essays are shorter versions of stories that are written at exams during a limited period of time. To narrate means to tell a story. So apart from ensuring that your plot or storyline is interesting, you need to make sure that the techniques that you have used will also make it enjoyable for the reader. We all love listening to and reading stories. We do tell stories to different people daily. We may act out sequences or even relate a funny situation that took place in school to our parents. Therefore, writing a story that is well-structured and one that has all the ingredients for engagement is vital. On that note, let's look at what makes a good narrative. Narrative essays are commonly confused with descriptive essays. The main difference is that a narrative has a story to tell and usually has a beginning, middle and an end. The main purpose of a narrative essay is to tell the reader about events, interactions and experiences in a limited period of time or in your case, in a couple of pages. It always has a vivid plot. Descriptive essays are written to create an image of a person, place, thing or experience in the reader's mind. As mentioned before, there is no plot or storyline. Let's look at some easy steps that you can take to write a fantastic narrative essay. The first step that you need to take into consideration is preparation. How do you prepare for a narrative essay? Well, you need to prepare. In previous lessons, you have been introduced to the way in which you can do up a rough draft. I myself am a strong believer of a rough draft and before writing something I would consider doing up either a flowchart or a mind map. By doing this, you are able to list out your thoughts and briefly have an idea about what would work when writing a narrative essay. You can get a better idea of these by looking at page 19 and page 81 of your pupil's book. There, you would notice that both a mind map and a flowchart have been introduced to you. Sorting out your rough draft will give you some time to gather your thoughts, but make sure you don't spend too much of time on this. Step two, you need to really understand the title and figure out whether you have the potential to elaborate on the given title. Can you write about the given title in an interesting manner? Be sure that you choose a title that you can write about easily. Look at ways that you can create a different twist on the topic given. Sometimes students choose to write overdone topics and use overdone stories. Try to always be different. Step 3. Think about your plot or storyline. Your plot, as mentioned before, needs to be out of the ordinary. Figure out from the very onset how you want your story to progress and refrain from having too many things happening in the plot. Keep it simple and remember, less is more. Once you have a general idea, establish the beginning, middle and the end of your plot. You may highlight it in your rough draft. 
Remember, the plot should be interesting so that the reader is pleasantly surprised by the end of the story. Think about having a twist or even an abrupt ending to make your story a little exciting. Let's look at this story mountain. According to the diagram, at the start of your story, you should give some background information. Rising action indicates the way which the issues or the main problem has been introduced. Then, at the peak of the mountain is your climax, the most exciting part of the story where the problem discussed in rising action is addressed. Then you have the falling action where gradually the issues presented earlier on are addressed and finally in the resolution the writer provides a suitable ending. Step 4. Think about your characters. Don't have too many characters to begin with. You have a main character and the story can be on that character. Either you can write the entire story from your main character's point of view by using the first person I or you can use the third person narrative he or she. Usually, first person narratives are very personal and you are able to give a lot of feelings and emotions for such a narration. A third person narration is more general and I guess most students find using a third-person narration to be easier. Step 5. Try to incorporate some language techniques or narrative devices. So what are these narrative devices? Well, you can include a little bit of dialogue, but be careful not to put too much of direct speech. Similarly, you will want to use description too. You can describe the setting, the action that takes place, and you can describe reactions. You can even describe character traits or the appearance of characters if you are confident. You can learn about how you could describe places and actions by viewing some of our previous lessons. Also remember to use different sentence structures in your narration. Always vary the lengths of your sentences. You may not only want to write short sentences, but also long sentences. One of the biggest issues that students have is writing long, confusing sentences. You can also look at including medium-sized sentences too. In order to keep your sentences varied, you can also use punctuation marks. Apart from the basic punctuation marks like the full stop, the exclamation mark and the question mark, you can use the ellipsis, the colon, when and where necessary. And I particularly like to use the dash for those long pauses. Step 6. Try to limit your essay to at least five paragraphs. Ideally, your essay should have five paragraphs. Look at the five paragraph essay organizer. The introduction which hooks the reader, well you can choose to present some background information of the situation or even description of the setting. Thereafter, write three paragraphs incorporating different topic sentences, three different ideas that you want to develop. Each body paragraph will present the rising action, the climax, and the falling action. In your final paragraph, write out the ending and you can even choose to have an unexpected ending or even an abrupt one. After you have considered all of these steps, don't forget that all of the ideas have to be limited to the word limit given in your essay. In your O-level exam paper, they have stated to use about 200 words, but you can go over if you like. Let's now look at how we can write a narrative for one of the essay questions in your O-level past paper. Let's look at the 2017 paper, Test 16. You are asked to write a story that begins with, as I approached the deserted house at the end of the road, I saw 
if you look at the title very carefully, you would notice that you are expected to continue the story from that introductory sentence. You would also notice that the sentence is already in first person. So you will be expected to use the first person when you write the rest of the essay. Remember, when you use the first person, you can include your thoughts and feelings in your narration. Let's now use a mind map to put together our ideas. Remember, you need just five paragraphs. In your introductory paragraph, you can state what you saw. A suspicious looking man, a long lost friend, or a golden chest. In the second bubble of your mind map, you can include how you felt. Maybe you were nervous, annoyed, or even excited. The third paragraph, which is presented in the third point of your mind map, you can present the climax of your story. The suspicious man could be a relative. The long lost friend can be very hostile with you. Or the golden chest can have something completely unexpected and mysterious. As the fourth point, we can explore the falling action. That is how the situation slowly gets moved towards forming a solution. In this manner, the mysterious man can have a conversation with you and you can slowly and surely come to terms with him being your neighbor or you can address your friend's hostility or the chest that you open can have a secret message that will help you later on. Finally, in the last paragraph and the fifth bubble in your mind map, you can include how you would like the story to end. It really depends on your creativity. When we plan out our story in this manner, we can spend more time improving our other skills. Based on each point, you can decide to use direct speech or description accordingly. When you're building up to a climax, you can play around with the words you use and you can write short snappy sentences to create a little bit of tension. The best way to improve on your narrative skills is to simply read more. The more you read, the more ideas you get. If you are unable to read, try watching short stories but, um, but make sure that they are in English so that you can start learning new vocabulary and phrases. I do hope this lesson was useful to you. If you did enjoy this lesson, please do subscribe to our channel. Until next time, goodbye.